Welcome to another exciting episode of the Atomic Podcast. Today I'm here with Hudson Like. About 20 years ago, Hudson played the villain Kalisto on the very popular show Xena Warrior Princess. And now she's teaching yoga classes throughout the United States and Europe. She also has two yoga DVDs, a meditation CD, and a healthy cookbook called Yum. And the most recent one that we're going to be talking about today, Healing Yourself Whole with the help of using pure essential oils. Funnily enough, while she was known for playing the psycho killer Kalisto, her life is dedicated to a holistic way of living and to share what she learns with others. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Hudson-like. Intellectual stimulation by way of mobile devices. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Atomic Podcast. And here is your host of the show, Efren Guzman. Ladies and gentlemen, Hudson Like. How are you, Hudson Like? How you been? <laughs> I am well. How are you, Efren? I'm doing good in the Midwest with this dry, kind of, well, it's not really dry heat, but it's like that kind of cool, like when you go to certain shade spots, it's cool. And then when, when you're at the sun, you feel the heat. And what I, yeah. what I, dis, I, I, don't, I don't, hate is a strong word. What I despise is those dreaded mosquitoes. So. <laughs> oh, are they out? They're out. Oh yeah, because it's warm. It must be. It must be um, humid. Yeah, but you know the thing is, you know, there's not a lot of buildings. There's a lot of trees and a lot of grass and flowers. So like the bugs are all swarming. Like in my garage, is full of mosquitoes like on the wall. So it's just, just not very cool to look at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how's everything with you? Good. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful morning here. I'm in LA right now. I'm about to leave for Europe tomorrow. Um. And the weather right now is perfect. It's not too hot. And we don't have bugs. We don't have a lot of mosquitoes here. <laughs> you see, that, I think that that's like the best part about living in like big cities is like you don't, there's bugs, but it's not a lot of it. Like unless you go to like a park area, but you don't see that much of it. Yeah, that's right. But when I go to India, they're relentless. Oh. Relent and horrible. You're just, you can't even sleep at night. They just <sighs> find to get in. Uh, they must. Those bugs out there must look so different. I don't. I don't even know. I'm just. I'm just like assuming. They, the, <laughs> yes. The in southern India, they can get really big, really, really big. Like frogs can get really big. There's tons of what? crows and there's amazing <laughs> amount of eagles, which was surprising. Wow. Right by the beach, eagles. There's so many eagles in southern India. Yeah. Oh man. Ooh. Wow, that's amazing. I, I would love, like, you know, it, it's it's weird, like, we in different places, different cultures, different lives, it's like, different insects, different animals, so it's always fascinating to see, like, you know, I, I hear, like, Texas has mosquitoes the size of, like, praying mantis, so I was like, ugh, you know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> I just came from Texas. I didn't see that. Oh, you didn't see that? Oh, okay, good for no, you, dude. I didn't see, but I believe it's possible, because <laughs> it's pretty wet there. Yeah, I believe uh, it's amazing what nature comes up with. Yeah, and nature is a beautiful thing, though. Um, Indeed. So, Hudson, tell me, um, tell the fans out there, what have you been up to in your life? What's What's been going on with you? Um, well, I teach yoga now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just wrote a book um, that I'm incredibly proud of. And it's a small, easy-to-read um, book on how to deal with emotions. Oh, wow. And uh, it's doing really well right now, and uh, it's not yet out out on Amazon Prime. It'll be out on Amazon Prime um, August fifteenth. Yeah, oh. and it's called Healing Yourself Whole. Oh, can you can you give me some details about it? Like what? Like how do you? Like what do you mean? Like dealing with emotions? Like what does it? Like what is what is the context? Uh, um, details about it. Like what is it? Or, uh, well, we all have emotions, mm -hmm. and, and one of the things we, we're not really taught on how to deal with how to deal with our emotions. And as human beings, we tend to, especially when we grow up, we we use things to try to shut down our emotions and our feelings. So mm -hmm. when we come home from work, we watch TV, we watch movies, we binge watch things. Me too. I'm not different. Mm -hmm. um, or we have a bunch of caffeine, or we have a glass of wine, or we smoke, or we eat. We really try to use something outside of ourselves to squash the feelings that we may be having of emptiness, loneliness, 
fears, deep sadness, rage seems to be the only acceptable emotion that we're allowed to have. And you can see, you can see it on the roads. And, um, and even what's behind the rage, like what's behind that and how we're not trained to sit still and actually feel our emotions. So they can be released and not released on another, yeah. but released within ourselves so we can find a place of genuine peace within ourselves. Oh. And that's, I feel like that's really lacking in our society. I certainly wasn't brought up with this. Mm-hmm. So I've meditated a lot in my life and by no means have I perfected anything, but everything that I've learned, um, I feel best when I'm able to share with others. Because I would like to live in a place where, where everybody is more conscious. And everybody has a freedom to like themselves. Yeah. Sounds so simple, but we're not even conscious of what that means to like, to genuinely embrace and like who we are. Yeah. Instead of constantly running from it and trying to get the approval of somebody else so yeah. we can be okay. Yeah, I know emotions like were kind of hard for me when I was growing up because like I was raised one of those like father figures who says, "Oh, you're a man, you don't cry, you know, don't cry, or you know, tough up, tough up." So like, is in a way like on um, people for ex- to express their emotions in that way instead of like holding it in because I know there's a lot of people that like they they're loving but they're like non emotional that they don't show their emotions. Um, is it like? Is it like trying to release your emotions out, basically, what you, do, what you write in the book? I think, it, it, well, every, every human being is so different. Uh-huh. We have such different patterns and ways of expressing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yes, I, I totally understand what you're saying about the um, patriarchy of, of the male having to be strong and not being able to, what that, what that means to be strong, yeah. which is nonsense. There is times where women and men, we need to not be in an emotional place and get something done, especially if it's really important. It's not going to help to sit there and scream and cry if your child's in the middle of traffic. Yeah. You need to take action and get the child out of the traffic. Mm-hmm. So there's a time and place for everything. But I feel like, yes, that's a perfect example of, a, of a, the past hierarchy of a male saying to another male, you need to not cry. You need to stop. Yeah. Stop crying. And it's not about, um, see, this is where it's a, it's a slippery slope. It's not about saying, oh, you must cry. You must cry. You know, keep crying. You fell down. Cry. Let it out. It, but it's not about suppressing it either. It's about being genuine in the moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if someone says, okay, keep crying, keep having your emotions, you may actually be um, setting up that child to get all of his attention from having his emotions. It's That's not necessarily genuine. It's about somebody allowing someone else, well, we're talking about bringing up a child. This is, has nothing to do with the book, but it's allowing space for someone to be genuine in how they feel in that moment. And that's what this book is. This book is to remind you that none of your emotions are bad, that they're there. And the more you feel like they're bad and you suppress them, they're going to come out sideways. And not only, I mean, if we work on a really base level, people who don't deal with their emotions at all Mm. tend to have a lot of accidents physically or they get physically sick. Wow. Really? So, yeah, so it's really important that we acknowledge what's happening inside of us and in a place. And when I say that, I don't mean acting out on another person. Like, I'm really angry, so I'm going to start yelling. You you get to sit. You get to learn how to comfort and self-soothe and have those emotions of rage or anger where you get to meet them yourself. Mm. And that doesn't mean stuff them. You get to meet them. Learn how to be conscious and self-soothe and give yourself what you need. Because nobody can do that better than you. We can all support each other and help each other. But only you are going to know you better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But we don't, like I said, we're just not taught that. So we know so little about our own selves. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, I never even thought about it. How long did it take for you to research all this? Like to 
you know, have like notes and, and research emotions and get all this together? Well, it's not, that's the thing about it. It's not, um, it's not a schooling where you study someone else's notes. I mean, I have, but the best way to study is look at yourself. So mm -hmm. I've been on the planet 49 years. I've been through a lot in my life. And so I share what works for me and what doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I think it's direct experience rather than studying from somebody else's point of view. That's where we get the most knowledge and wisdom, rather wisdom, even more than knowledge. Yeah. So the book is about dealing with you as an individual. It's not about me telling you how to feel, but it's giving signposts of things where you can learn how to honor yourself, yourself, mm -hmm. not because I'm telling you to do it, not because I have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. All I am is guiding. Because mm -hmm. essentially, we're the real teachers of ourselves if we're willing to listen and learn. Mm -hmm. But we're listening and learning to our own being. I, does this make sense to you at yeah, all, or am yeah. I getting too esoteric? No, 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 no. It's making sense. It's making sense to me. Um, also, like, um, is it also dealing with um, pure essential oils as well in the book? The book does deal with pure essential oils. Um, which are lovely because our smell affects the brain profoundly. And these essential oils, um, the ones that I recommend, you can use any, mm -hmm. um, are a company called Young Living, and they're the best that i found. Okay. They're really, and I'm not connected to Young Living, so I don't get money from Young Living at all. Um, they Even when I hold the bottles, they feel... They feel as pure as they can be to me, and they. Wow. When I I did study the man who who just recently died, who made them, Gary Young, mm -hmm. and the process they go through to make them is incredible, and it's very ancient, and it comes from the Egyptians. Mm. And that said, also the book doesn't need to use essential oils. It's. Uh, I love using whatever we can use to assist and help, mm -hmm. but the book was made to be used with them or without them. So it's not necessary to have to use essential oils to use the book because there's nothing outside of us we really have to use to learn to take care of ourselves. But it's always helpful to be willing to experiment with the things that are around us. Mm -hmm. You know, also, you know, you have um, a meditation CD, you have DVDs, you had a, you have a, um, a, your book, Yum, a cookbook as well. Um, how did you, you know, from, you know, from starting out in, in um, LA and, and, you know, doing this practice, was this something that was al always, this was something always you was involved in, like with yoga or this something that came up later on in life? Um... I started taking yoga when I was 23. Oh, okay. In New York City, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. New York City. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yoga really helped change my life. Okay. Um, profoundly and slowly. And then I got into meditation over time. I took my first teacher's training at 29, but I didn't take it to teach others. I took it because I wanted to know um, more about yoga and more about myself. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I did end up teaching. Um, my closest friend at that time was like, you, um, I want you to teach a yoga retreat. And I was like, that sounds crazy. <laughs> and, I did it and I loved it because serving others gets you out of your own bullshit. Like mm -hmm. there's nothing that's more helpful, especially if you have like that self obsessed, I'm not good enough. Um, or I'm a bad person or whatever your mind tells you that's negative about yourself. The best way to get out of that, in my experience, besides meditating, meditating is incredibly helpful, but the best physical action to do is to serve others. Mm. Because once you're out of yourself, out of your self-centered poor me, and I don't mean that as a slam, I have that too, even to this day I can go there. It just, when we sit in our own muck, we can't see clearly. And when we're willing to give what, whatever we have, and we all have something to give, even a hello or a smile to a cashier, 
We all have the power to give something positive to another in a moment to moment basis, always. And when we do that, it's selfish in a way because we start to feel better immediately. Yeah. So that's why I started doing it. And I can tell you in all my life and all, and I loved acting. It was fun. It was super fun when I would do it. Mm -hmm. But the happiest I've been, the most complete, not happiest, it's not the right word. Okay. The most complete I've ever felt is after a class when people have come out of Shavasana, which is the end of class. And they have a calm that they've never experienced before. And it's, it permeates the whole room. Mm -hmm. Or when people cry in my class and they release all these stuck emotions and then their face is flushed and they look so beautiful and there's all this peace and light in their eyes. And then I feel worthy of my life. Like then I feel like, okay, now I'm doing something beneficial in the world. Now I feel well used. And that's my experience. Hmm. But that's what feeds me, is to, to share whatever I have with others so we can all connect deeply to ourselves. Those people aren't connecting to me. They're connecting to themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. And that's the reward. Yeah. And then, you know, from, from doing this, like, you know, you're, 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 you're like showing others how to do it. Who, who showed you like to, to find your inner emotions? It was it someone that influenced you? Well, I would say I'm still doing it and I'm still, I'll never stop learning. So there's, okay. there's not, I have plateaued where I've got the answers. I don't, and I never will have all the answers. Not possible, mm -hmm. just not possible. Mm -hmm. And I'll always be hungry enough to learn. So as much as I teach, I'm always willing to learn from another teacher. Um, and I've learned through life. I've had violently abusive, horrible teachers in my life. And they have been incredible teachers, as crazy as that sounds. Would I recommend people going to them? No, it's not the best way. <laughs> but if you're willing to really stay open to learn, you can leave too. You have the right to leave any time if you can remember that. But I have learned so much from the bad experiences as I have from someone who has incredible teachings to me and they teach me with love. So I think it's my thirst for constantly being curious about what this being is I call Hudson. Yeah. Like, what is this? How did I get here? How did I get in this, this flesh suit? How do I work <laughs> this thing? How do I move around? I don't get it. And I always felt like everybody else got it but me. Like I'm, and that's a self-centered thought, but I think a lot of human beings can relate to that. Like, how am I supposed to get through this lifetime and I'm supposed to find everlasting happiness and be okay? And when is that going to happen? And it, in, in what I have learned, it's, it's not, I'm going to get there someday and, and I'll bring it back to, to my old days. So when I was on TV and I, I was known for, for playing a character, Kalisto's, you know, warrior princess. And I was here, I was flying to New Zealand first class mostly men, businessmen with a lot of money. I'm the only young female on the first class area of the plane. Yeah. I'm making tremendous amount of money for my age. I have a man that loves me incredibly. I have this great house. Um, I, have, I have somewhat fame. I have everything that America told me would be success. I would be a success, like that successful. Mm. And I was suicidal. Wow. And I was like, if this is not it, I'm effed. Like, uh, this, if this is not the pinnacle, and I'm meeting with producers that want to make me the new Meg Ryan at the time, like heads of studios, everything is happening. Everything is coming to me, mm -hmm. and I don't want to live. I'm that unhappy. Mm. And it was the best gift I could have gotten. Because once you realize... When all those things happen to you that you think are going to make those outside things are going to complete you and make you happy and you get lucky enough, lucky, as strange as that sounds, lucky enough to realize that's not making me happy, then you, you either want to die and, and take that action 
or you start fighting and hunting for what's behind that. Mm -hmm. If this isn't making me happy, then what is happiness? What will make me feel like I deserve to be a human being and experience a peaceful, full, contained life? I don't even know what that means as I say it. <laughs> but to feel... To feel... Hmm, more complete. More complete. Okay. It's the only word I can come up with right now. Yeah. I'm sorry if that's no, not no, deep. No, it's fine. Yeah. But... And so I hunted for it. And I feel, as a 49-year-old woman, I still have insecurities. I have insecurities. I have likes. I have dislikes. I have issues. I'm human, just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But I have more peace in my life. If you knew how unpeaceful I was in my teens and my 20s, mm -hmm. I have more peace in my life than I have ever had before. And I have hunted it. I have done whatever I could do to search and experiment and explore to try to find that. And so when I find, whatever I find, I try to share with others. And that's why I wrote this book. Wow. Oh, I had no idea, Hudson. Oh, that's crazy. It's just, you know, you think it was just the success. Yeah, you had too much success. It was just like overwhelming. Or was there a, lo a lot of negativity around you that you had these thoughts that... You know, I don't. I don't want to be here anymore. Like, um, it's a, it's a. I can't really answer that question directly because it's so many components so, okay. that make up a human being and, and how we think. But yes, I definitely had a challenging upbringing. I had a very challenging time in high school. I had a challenging time in my twenties, um, and I believe it was my karma as well. And. It's already happened, and there's incredible blessings to those things happening because I have a deep compassion for other human, humans. I really have a compassion for other human beings. Even the bullies I have compassion for because I get that they're also in pain. I play the biggest bully on Xena there was. <laughs> like, get it. I get it. And I get the suffering that they're dealing with. Um, I don't condone that behavior. Like, that would be insane. And, and when we harm others, we harm ourselves so deeply. That's what we're unconscious of. Mm -hmm. When we treat others horribly, it comes back to us tenfold, hundredfold, and we don't even know it. So mm -hmm. that's another story. So, yes, there was a lot of things that brought me to that place and how I essentially, some people can go through horrific things in their life and they can still grow and flower beautifully. The way I was made up is I did not grow and flower, flower beautifully at that time. Mm. I crumbled a lot. And it wasn't about having too much success. And I'm grateful that it didn't go further because if it did, I, I could have turned to drugs. I, I could have become an alcoholic. I mean, there's many other things that mm. I could have wanted to turn down the volume and use something else to try to do that. But I sabotaged my career pretty pretty well too I have to say and it wasn't I, it wasn't in the cards thank goodness it wasn't in the cards that's a painful life for me that would yeah. have been a painful life for me um, there's one more thing I wanted to say to that so to, to answer that question it's not that the success was too much it was my belief that that success would somehow save me and validate me mm, okay. and it did not and I am grateful that it did not. Because if it did, I'd have lips, you know, the size of slugs. With all these injections and, and big fake boobs. And I'd be living in Hollywood trying to look like I'm 20 when I'm 49. Yeah. That's me. And I'm not judging other people. That's I don't want to do that. I want to yeah. become more and more genuine. Wow. I want to be more and more whatever I am in moment to moment than trying to constantly get approval and love from the outside. Yeah. And that's good too. There's nothing wrong with getting love and friendship and enjoying other people. That's lovely. But my, because of my upbringing being so hard, I was desperate to be important. Yeah. 
desperate to be validated, to matter. Yeah. I needed to matter. Yeah. When, and when those kids in high school saw me on Xena and they wrote me and were like, hey, I remember you. I remember being so angry. I was like, you didn't even talk to me. <laughs> you like, didn't even like me. And now I'm valued. I was like, that's bullshit. Yeah. And it, it is bullshit. And I get it too. I get it from their point of view. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember that person. I wasn't close to them. And now they're on TV. And that's really cool. But at the time when I was young, I was like, how dare you? How dare you all of a sudden validate me? Which is all I ever wanted from them. So you can see the insanity of it. Yeah, so it's like a cycle, like a vicious cycle, you know. Yeah, oh. it's nonsense. It's mm. nonsense, and it's my nonsense. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I just want to go back a little bit. You said you know you had a rough, rough upbringing. Is it like with bullying in schools or home life? Like, was it like really, really bad at that time? Yeah, it was really, really bad. It was bad, and. um you know, people do the best they can with what they have. Mm -hmm. I listen a lot to Eckhart Tolle, and, and he says something. He says, people who... It doesn't mean I don't think people should have their feelings about their upbringing. They should, and it's really necessary that I think people acknowledge what's happened to them growing up. I just don't want to live in it and live in resentment. Mm -hmm. It's important that I acknowledge it and I feel it, and I also love these people. It doesn't mean people have to love the people that brought them up either if they were really abusive. But my case is I love, I love my family. Um, it's not idealistic and they weren't brought up idealistically either. Mm -hmm. And, and they did what they did with the tools that they had. And I see that as an adult woman now. Um, and then going to school. Yeah, I was pretty hated. <laughs> like I was pretty fair to say that I was pretty hated. Wow. Um, and I probably perpetuated it a lot, too. I dressed very sexually, and I would walk down the middle of the, the hall, even though I was terrified. I don't know what, I don't know why I would do that, but I would. I'd always want to be, like, front and center, and yet I was mortified, and I would sit at my locker and eat my lunch, and, yeah, I was called a lot of names. I was spit on, thrown pennies at. Oh, my God. Um, a woman scrawl, a girl scrawled bitch on my locker so you can't wash it off. It was pretty, it was pretty, I get bullying is incredibly damaging. It's just, and now with the internet, it's nonstop. So mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine how much worse it is for a child to go through that right now. But I do know what that's like. I do know, I do know, and I know how painful that is and how it affects you where you start to believe that you're nothing, that you're nothing, that you don't matter and that you're not lovable like true that i don't think there's anything worse than that that you actually believe that you are not worth being loved by another like in, insane once you lose that then what do you have yeah wow oh, i didn't know you've been through all that wow that's great. i'm saying everybody's been through it but the way you describe it in detail is like you know it's a vivid memory you remember that you know you remember having yeah. you know bitch written on your locker like you know it's 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 in, embedded in you for the rest of your life but you know you, you don't let that hold you down so that's that's another thing as well you know well i did and i suffered that a lot yeah but then then that's the choice do i want to stay in that place or do i want to try to go past it i don't want that to be my defining moment in life yeah. That happened so many years ago. And yes, I do remember it. And it, it was, especially when you're going through puberty, like your hormones are crazy, you're <laughs> crazy, and you're yeah. so sensitive. Like everybody's like, am I doing it right? Am I looking right? Am I, like, uh, um, am I getting it wrong? Like, how do I get it right? And I remember when the, the word bitch was scrawled on the locker, the acceptance I had, because there was nothing you can, you can't wash it. Yeah. And I remember being like, wow, this is just how it is. And as crazy as this sounds, the acceptance gave me peace. Wow. I was like, okay, so this is what's happening. Okay. Okay. Wow. And as I got older, um, you know, not everyone likes me. And it's not always, it's not pleasant when someone doesn't like you. Um, but you can't. You can't change other people's minds. You can't force other people to do what you want them to do. So, in, in, this, in, this, in the truest self, 
what I've learned is the most you can do is really focus on yourself and to grow your own spirit, to grow your own consciousness bigger and find peace. Like, what is peace? It's not just some silly snowflake word. And I don't have a problem with the word snowflake. I'm the biggest snowflake there is. It's so big, big old, fat, beautiful snowflake. <laughs> And yes, we are all going to melt. We're all going to die. So, yeah. but while I'm here, what can I leave that may be beautiful for somebody else? Yeah. Wow. Um, Hudson, um, describe a typical day for you. Like, what is your most in, in your, what what is your most important thing to do when you get up in the morning? Uh, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I'll make myself hot water and lemon and I'll probably have a dandelion tea and then I meditate right away. I tend to get up around 4.30 in the morning. Wow. And I will do a half an hour of kundalini yoga. I'll meditate, chant for about an hour and then I'll silently chant or silently meditate doing kriya yoga for an hour. And then um, I'd like to do yoga. Mm. And I can't always get all of that stuff done, but without a doubt, I usually at least sit even when I'm in a hurry for an hour mm. when I get up. Like, that's how I start my day. Like, I'm that dedicated wow. to my practices. And that's seven days a week, right? You do the same thing every yes. single... Okay. Wow. Yes. Do you do you even... Do you switch up on the tea or is it always the same tea as well? Uh, the dandelion tea is really good for my liver. Okay. And... Um, when you have hot water and lemon, it helps you go to the bathroom quicker because you're really dehydrated at night. So the water, you need water in your system more than probably you think you even know. If you're in a bad mood or you don't feel good, you're probably super dehydrated. So drink more. And the, and the lemon, what it does is it cleanses the body, so it helps you go to the bathroom quicker. Mm -hmm. So all the waste product, the physical waste product, gets moved through your system, which also makes you feel better. And it's better for your physical body. And the dandelion tea is my favorite, and that um, also cleanses out the liver. Mm. Um, how would you describe yourself in terms of attitude and personality, likes and dislikes and strengths? Well, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's God, I don't know. That's somebody else's point of view. <laughs> um, I'll try to answer that question. Okay. Um, I think I'm funny as hell sometimes and yeah. moody and I can be <laughs> self-centered and narcissistic and incredibly tender and very compassionate to other human beings pain. Mm -hmm. I'm really drawn to when people are in pain sometimes too much and I have to make sure I back off yeah. um, because people need to grow at their own rate and I don't need to stick my fingers into everything. And um, sometimes people get super needy with me and they need to be able to stand on their own as well. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I can get needy as well. So, and I'm pretty much a loner. Um, I need alone time. I pick up other people's energy really fast, yeah. which can be great if I'm working with someone one on one, or I'm reading a chart, or I'm teaching yoga. But it can be very draining if I'm in LA traffic and people are raging all around me because then I feel it. Um, and I'm fun. I think I'm super fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, what um, what sort of reactions you get from people when they know you're um a yoga healer? Like, what 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 reactions you get? Like, from your like close friends, associates? Like, what, what, what reactions you get? Well, all my friends are used to it, so none of them are shocked by it. If you're talking about my close friends, and yeah. my close friends, like one of my dear friends, is in Taiwan. She's Taiwanese, and she texts me every morning, and she'll connect to me and um. I have another friend in China, and uh, none of them are surprised. We all sort of connect to each other through the ethers, yeah. through the ethers of the Internet, but also through the ethers of something emotionally is happening for us. We show up uh, energetically for each other, and it's pretty solid. But people who don't know me when they take my class, yeah. um, a lot of times people cry. They cry, and then they're really shocked that they're crying and they get embarrassed because we're not taught to cry in front of each other. And mm -hmm. the space I try to hold is, uh, is really incredibly safe where people get to let go of that stuff that they're holding on to. People always say, why am I crying? And they'll, they'll grab my ankle when I walk by. They're like, I'm crying. I don't know why. And, I, and I'll always say it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. The why doesn't matter. It just matters that you take out the garbage. 
Like yeah. what you're doing literally is it's the same thing as the dandelion tea or the lemon water. You're just releasing a bunch of stuff that you don't need anymore. And we don't need to know the whys of it. That's just a mental game. Just be willing to let it release. That's the releasing of the emotions. Yeah. Uh, you, I know you also have a healthy cookbook called Yum. Um, it, 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 are these are food you eat yourself all the time, or these are like recipes you've been handed down? Like, tell me about it. It's so cute. Uh, <laughs> I never eat healthy food. I've just made it. It's so weird. Like, I eat McDonald's. Um, uh, no, they're recipes that I eat. Okay. And it's um, a very simple cookbook. Um, and there's many out there. There's many, many, many ways to find um, healthier ways to eat. We definitely need more vegetables in our life, all of us, more mm -hmm. water, and less meats. The meat, um, if we eat tons and tons of meat, it's not only bad for, obviously, the animal, but our whole world, the planet, sustaining meat's really difficult. But it's also really not good for our own physical system and our health. There's a great book called... Uh, Planet for the New Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, Planet for the New America. Planet for the New Earth. Can't remember. God, but it's by Robbins, the um, the heir to Baskin's Robbins, and that book oh. is an incredible book. Even though I'm, you'll find it if you Google it. Just look up Robbins yeah. and uh, Planet for a New America. I think it is Planet for a New America. Yeah. And uh, and it tells you what it's like if you slow down your meat consumption. And what will happen to your body if you're willing to do that, and the planet as well. Um, but essentially, I would say it's vegetables we need more of. And that's one thing I was never interested in as a child. But it's vegetables that really keep cleansing our systems. And you, once you start eating them, you become addicted to them. They're actually, if you, if you play with it, you can make them delicious. Yeah. Like in what way? Give me an example. Um, well, this is my taste, mind you, but like... Mm -hmm. Oh, and you're probably going to know this too. Well, I don't know. I don't know Puerto Rican, but you're you're around a bunch of Italian Americans as well back yep. in New York City. Um, broccoliate. So if you take Italian broccoli or Chinese broccoli, yeah, depending on what country you're in, they're both the same. And you cut it up finely with a bunch of garlic and onions, and you saute it. It is like oh, like a vegetable crack. It wow. is so delicious and it's so simple just cook it with a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil wow and and, and saute the onions first then a bunch of garlic because that cleans the blood yeah. and then the broccoli if you cut it really small and the broccoli is thin long broccoli not the big chunky broccoli which is lovely too i make mm. a soup a fennel soup out of the chunky broccoli which is delicious i have in the morning wow. but yeah there's you just have to be willing to experiment like, we get so stuck and addicted to one thing, we don't want to change. And once you eat McDonald's or Burger King all the time and you have a vegetable, at first you're going to feel sick because your body's going to go through a cleanse. Mm -hmm. So that's normal. Oh, that's interesting. But I love broccoli, so that sounds good. <laughs> I love broccoli. Broccoli is one of the best veggies for you ever. Wow. How about, like, um, uh, cucumbers? Is there anything, like, you do? Sometimes, like, I'll put, like, lime on cucumbers with a little bit of salt or something. Is that, is that really good or...? Yes, that's okay. lovely. I mean, I think we should all be aware. I love salt, too. But yeah. be aware of our salt intake. And if yeah. you can, try to, try to use, like, sea, uh, sea salt or Himalaya salt is really good for you. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. That's right. Himalayan salt. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but that sounds delicious. Cucumbers and a little bit of sea salt sounds marvelous. Wow. Um, Hudson, what is your personal motto? I don't have a motto. Motto. What would I say? Um, uh, okay. I like that. What would I say my motto is? Um, focus inward. Change yourself. Change yourself. Focus on yourself. And focus. that will help shift the world. Yeah. Um, you know, some people... And, you know, there's some people who have regrets and some people who don't have regrets or they don't believe in regrets. But do you have any regrets? Yeah. Yeah. There's people in my life that I wish I treated better in the past. Mm -hmm. I've made amends, but I wish I didn't even have to make amends. There's people in the past that I 
wish I had enough consciousness to treat with love and respect, and I didn't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, we all do. We all do. You know, there's some people say, oh, I don't believe in where it gets because whatever happens, everything happens for a reason. But, you know, if you're always thinking about it in the back of your mind, like the what ifs or I should have been this way, those are regrets. You know? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't beat myself up over it. I don't, I have made amends. That's the best part yeah. about making amends. And that's what helps with regrets is when you confront the person you've really treated poorly, um, and you you really own what you've done. You own it. That's an amends. Not just saying the words "I'm sorry." I mean, and making restitution to the best of your ability. And if you don't know what that is, even say to the person, "How can I make this right for you?" Hmm. When you're willing to do that, which is really scary, it's so freeing, and you like yourself better. So those regrets, you don't hate yourself the way you might have disliked yourself before when you're willing to do that. But if you ask me if I have regrets. I, I wish I had the consciousness, yes, never to have done some of the things I've done. Yes. Yeah. It was not, it was, I'm here now, it's made me who I am, but I don't, it's nothing that I would like to repeat, and I'm not at all proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about your um, healing trip. You have some dates coming up, right, in June? I do, but all of the retreats are already fully booked. Oh, they're right. So there's, yeah, they're booked. We have we have um, a week long retreat that's coming up in October in Czech Republic, um, and that is uh, let me check the dates. That's October. I'll be coming back from India. That's going to be October fifteenth through the twenty second. And um, if people are interested in the week long retreat, which is incredible mm -hmm. for your mind and spirit, also people make really close connection and friends to the people that come. Mm -hmm. um, they can look it up on HudsonLike.com or they can go to I Like Yoga. dot com. I L E I C K Y O G A. dot com. Can you give a little? Can you give a little, um, little bit of details of what happens at these retreats if people never been there or they're interested in going? Sure, um, it's for every level. You don't ever have had to, to take yoga before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I just said that in English. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what we do um, is, I do my spiritual practice at four thirty in the morning, and I always leave it open for people to join me if they'd like. They can even bring their sleeping bags, and we meet in the yoga room. And they can sleep through it and just feel the vibration of it, or they don't have to come at all. It's just something that I offer so other people can experience something new, and I do that every day, and I open it up. But that's not uh, that's not a part of it. That's just something that I offer um, to people to experiment. But in the retreat itself, we do two yoga classes, an hour and a half every day in the morning and in uh, the late afternoon. Um, we're in the middle of nature, um, where it's sort of like a place that's built sort of like a commune. There's horses, there's peacocks, um, there's chickens, there's roosters, wow. there's cat, there's a bull. There's so much there. And then they have this beautiful lake and we walk to the lake. We take a day off of yoga and we all go swimming for a full day and have a big picnic. Um, we also have two dance classes during that week, and it's not dance as you know it. It's a free-form dance where people get to learn. You can lie on the floor the whole time. They get to listen to music and move their bodies in a way that feels good to them. And it's the lights are off and there's candles going, so people don't have to feel like they're being watched. But people get to learn, relearn, like you did when you were a kid, what feels good to how to move your body in a way that you want to move your body. So besides yoga, which is incredible for the mind and the physical body and the nervous system, you get this break where you get to listen to music. And if, if people are interested in it, you can look it up. It's Gabrielle Roth's Five Rhythms. We do two of these movement classes at night. Mm -hmm. And people get to learn how to be in their bodies, fully be in their bodies, and learn how to move in a way that's super fun to them. Mm -hmm. Sounds easy. People are really challenged by this wow. at first. Yeah. But I can tell you, I just had an interview yesterday, and um, one of my favorite students 
um, is a doctor, and she was so against doing this. She's English, and she was like, I am not dancing. Like, that's not happening. That's just not happening. I'll do your yoga, but I'm not dancing. She wouldn't dance for years, and finally she tried it, and she, I make her talk about it now when she's at a retreat because she loves it so much because it's it gets her out, especially a doctor, it gets you out of your idea of what looks good because we all want to look good to each other, but we don't know what feels good to us because we're so busy trying to impress each other. Mm-hmm. It's bananas. So we're not taking care of ourselves. We don't know what we like. We're so focused on the outside. So mm. those are pretty much the things we do. There's a lot of breaks, and sometimes we have talking circles. Sometimes we have chanting um, or meditation. But for the most part, it's people learning to be in their bodies deeply, um, learning how to heal their bodies, doing therapeutic yoga, and... Um, learning how to relax more. Mm. So it's, it's all about movements, opening yourself up instead of being an introvert and, and, and relaxation and just being one with being one in tune with yourself, right? Yes, but being an introvert is part of it. You have really? to be oh, inward okay. in order to do it. So yes, but it's also um, learning how to connect to other people's in a, in people in a very genuine way. In a real way, like how do you really feel? How do you really think? How, how, what's going on for you right now? Yeah. It's like being safe enough to speak your truth and be truthful to yourself. It's a place to honor yourself, to really learn how to honor yourself. Okay. Oh, I know I'm, a, I'm going a little bit over time, but just two more questions for you because I know you got to no. go. Um, so I'm going back to... Um, I. I, I, I I have to mention this again. I'm um, going back to Zena. Um, um, I don't. I don't know if you have a favorite, but what's your favorite Callisto episode? Oh God, I've been asked this, and I. I'm, <laughs> oh, you've been asked this before. Okay. So long. It's so. It's so. Um, so long ago, and I don't remember the um, episodes' names. Okay. But it would be my favorite episode when I got to play was when. Um, uh, Zena and Gabrielle freed me from uh, that pit that Hercules threw me in. And I was playing with the rat, and I came out, and I was so delightfully happy. And I, <laughs> I don't know if that was the same. I think it was the same one where I was at the campfire and playing the game of Truth or Dare with, uh, with Gabrielle. Like, that was yeah. just, that was my favorite. That oh. was super fun. Like, just ridiculously fun. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. My favorite personally is seeing you play Xena, you know, as Callisto, you know, I think we're like oh. with the body switch, I believe, was it? I, I, yeah. I, that that was really cool because, you know, you, you know, you could see your range and, you know, you know, you know, you're usually like the psychotic, you know, the like psychotic one. But, you know, people, I think if people saw that episode, they're like, oh, wow, you know, she's just more than Kalisto, you know, because, you know, how people get typecast, like, well, you know, so like to this day, you know, like William Shatner will always be Captain James T. Kirk. And even he said when he dies, he knows he's always going to be James T. Kirk. It's like, you know, when you pass away, you think people are always going to remember you as, oh, that was Kalisto. Right? Some people will, but yeah. the people that know me... Know you probably, personally, yeah. Probably will go past that. But yeah. some people may never go past that, and that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's part of my life. But yeah, it's... um, it, In the general public, yes, it's on TV and it's recorded, so I most likely will be known for that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you've done other things as well, but... You know, that's that's just like your staple mark. Like Kevin Sorbo will always be Hercules, even though he's doing so many different things now, especially Christian based films. But, you know, it's like he'll always be Hercules. It's just it's just so random. Right. But in a way, it's like, you know, like, you, know you own it, you know, like, you know what? I'm, I'm known for that, but I'm known for different things now. Like I'm I, 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 I am, I'm healing yoga. I am you know, I'm doing all these different beautiful, positive things. But. It's, it's it's just it's just so weird, right? Like when like the first thing you do is like you get you'll always be like kind of not that you're typecasted in a bad way, but that's what you'll be known for. Yeah, to the general public, yeah, who watch TV, absolutely. Yeah, uh, there's uh, yeah, I don't. There's nothing much to say about it. You just have to accept it. Yeah, it is what it is. 
Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, it's cool that you do because a lot of people, like, they shun from it. Like, no, I didn't do that. No, that's a long time ago. But it's like, you know what? If that's what... No, I do that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I have that reaction, too. Like, if yeah. people on Facebook contact me and they start calling me Kalisto, <laughs> oh, God. they won't even respond anymore because <laughs> it's not... But I understand it. Yeah. I do understand it. It's like seeing the Beatles and them playing a bunch of new music. Yeah. You know? And you're like, no, I don't want to hear the new music. I want to hear the old yep. song. Like, I want to hear the song I love. I totally get that. Yeah. And I now understand what it's like when you're creating something new and... If I was playing, if I was playing Kalisto, it might be different, although that would be horrible to play Kalisto for like 25 years. Um, yeah, it's a part of, it's a part of my life. I think what people don't understand, which is okay, is that that was a part of my life like 20 years ago. And, and they are connected to that because they watch that and it's very alive and real to them. And I understand that. Yeah. And it's nice when people also realize that I am an actress that played that part that was recorded and that was a very long time ago for me and yeah. that I'm in a different place. I could be, all the actors and musicians could be in a very, very different place from what was their most successful public uh, part, yeah. which is hard to do. You know, it's hard to do because you love what you love. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And um, my final question for you, Hudson, is what would the Hudson of today tell the Hudson of yesterday? What would the Hudson of today tell the Hudson of yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, let's say 20 years ago, Hudson. I would say I love you so much and that everything is going to be okay and everything actually is okay right now. Mm-hmm. And um, if I could, I would sit with her and just hug her and hold her. Wow. Wow. How do you think she would reciprocate back? I think she'd cry and accept it and be really grateful to be hugged and loved. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Hudson. Thank you. And I would just like to, I will, I will say this, people are interested in finding out more of the things that I've done. You can always look me up on HudsonLike.com, H-U-D-S-O-N-L-E-I-C-K.com. Or again, if you're interested in doing a week-long retreat, which I highly recommend because you're really seeped in a long period of time um, in beautiful nature with yourself and us. Um, you go to ilikeyoga.com, I-L-E-I-C-K, yoga.com. So thank you for thank you for making so much time for me. No, oh, thank you, Hudson. No, thank you for giving me the time. I appreciate that. Thank you for listening to the Atomic Podcast. We hope that you were intellectually stimulated by way of mobile devices. Until next time, have a good one.